Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. We must abandon the apostolic tradition. That statement was given by a German bishop at the Synod of Sin over the weekend. The statement sent shockwaves through the laity and will continue to do so when the implications of that statement are understood. The entire program of these modernists has been to get the church to accept and adapt to the sins that they are promoting and trying to make normal in the life of the church. And by the church these days, I mean now an entirely separate institution from the Catholic church, because they've admitted that we, meaning Catholics, need to become something different that they're calling the synodal church. It's time to take them at their word and encourage them to either repent or seek to found their own church somewhere else. This story makes more sense if we start with a sadly familiar face, though. Cardinal Fernandez, Francis is prefect of the dicastery of the doctrine of the faith, who, seemingly rejecting even the concept of sin because it's too divisive, well, we get this story. Headline from La Nuova Bosola Quotidiana. Tuco frees everyone. The only sin is clericalism. From the Facebook chair, Cardinal Fernandez imparts linguistic absolution. Even the word sinner is considered offensive. And woe to those who remember that the evangelical door is narrow. Fernandez took to Facebook of all places to chastise the five dubia cardinals. These are Burke, Zen, Brandmuller, and a couple of others for invoking the language of sin. Sin itself is now on trial, as is the language of sin. To call out sin is a form of abuse, according to Cardinal Fernandez, whose job includes investigating Ted McCarrick problems in the church. The author of this article explains all of that, then he gives us this, quote, Let's get back to the prefect who, who, censoring the concept of authority, continues by stating that this allows us to understand why Pope Francis states that the main cause of this problem in the church is clericalism rather than the, the imposition of fleshly ideology in society. So two quick notes. As Benedict XVI stated, the cause of this problem is the lack of faith. Only where faith no longer determines the actions of men are such crimes possible. Remove God and you have removed the greatest obstacle to doing evil. Furthermore, and with regard to clericalism, one of the many talismanic words of the synod, which mean everything and nothing, the authoritarianism of some priests is not the cause of the problem, but only a condition. It's like saying that marriages are the cause of divorce. The cardinal then continues. The reference to clericalism also helps to understand the call to a more, quote, synodal church, where authority is understood only in the context of co-responsibility and the variety of charisms. Here, the hierarchical authority liquefies in an apparently peer group and a democratic co-responsibility, which in reality serves as a screen to hide the great maneuvers of a few. Then the thrust. It is necessary to place authority in a context that prevents abuses of any kind and ensures religious respect for the dignity of people. The history of the church shows us ample examples of the absence of this respect in the face of the ostentation of sound doctrine and rigid morality. Therefore, anyone who, like the five cardinals mentioned above, calls for fidelity to the doctrine of one who would do such evil things, a person who vilifies the dignity of his brothers. On the contrary, the doctrine is rigid because it must rigidly protect the dignity of people. And lengthy quote. In plainer English, for those of us who call for sound doctrine are the villains of the Ted McCarrick problem in the church and similar problems. Remember that as we go forward with the main story today. You see, Diane Montagna, Catholic journalist who is covering the Synod of Sin in Rome, is back again. She asked some pretty tough questions of Cardinal Overbeck at the Synod press briefing. Here's how that exchange went, according to her posts on Twitter. Quote, October 21st, the Synod briefing. German Bishop Overbeck says, quote, We put Jesus Christ at the center of faith in a common quest without clinging to habits and traditionalisms, which, if critically examined, have no priority in the hierarchy of truth. And this, in the end, is important to say. Summing up Bishop Overbeck's statement and inviting him to correct me if I had misunderstood his meaning, I asked him what he meant by quote-unquote tradition, and if he meant apostolic tradition, end quote. 
She posted a video of his response to the basic question. It's in German. With a, But when he said traditionalism, she asked, did he mean apostolic tradition? And the answer he gave was a meandering word salad that tried to dodge the question. <sighs> then we get this response. Quote, I was not quite clear on what Bishop Overbeck meant in his response. So as soon as a briefing had ended, I went up to him and twice asked explicitly if he meant we needed to set aside apostolic tradition. And twice he said, yes, that this is what he meant, end quote. So yes, one of the bishop that the synod of sin wants us to set aside apostolic tradition. In a case you think I'm just reading too much into that, we can turn to the very moderate in tone Father Z, who is a traditional priest. He's not a rad trad, he's a traditional priest. There is a difference between a rad trad, a trad, and a traditional Catholic. And that applies to clergy as well. See, Father Z is a blogger as well as a priest, and his writings tend to be well regarded in the traditional world, even among clergy. He gives us this headline on his blog post about this. German Bishop at Synod, walking together, says we must stop clinging to habits and traditionalisms, including apostolic tradition. <laughs> his own post of the story includes the tweet thread I just read to you. Father Z gives us this small nugget of wisdom, though, to give you an idea of how even the clergy are responding. Quote, I am forced to wonder if, forced to hope that, what a thing to think, that this bishop doesn't know what apostolic tradition is. What did I just write? End quote. The reaction to this has been predictable. Most Catholics don't know about it. Some refuse to see the reality of the situation that is staring us all in the face. And some will engage in the defense of this abomination like they did with the demon prayer story that I covered recently. One comment on Father Z's story by a respondent named Kathleen summed this up perfectly. Quote, So we need to take him at his word. They mean to ignore overturn apostolic tradition. There's no language problem. This is what he means. I'm watching to see if this too shall be ignored because it would be inconvenient to acknowledge how bad this all is, how serious it is. I'm guessing as it has been for the last 10 years, this too will be glossed over, and we'll read some Catholic thinkers tomorrow explaining to us how in line that statement is with Catholicism, that every pope moved on from apostolic tradition. We were just too dumb to know it. Destroyers. These men are nothing but destroyers. What they are building is ugly and meaningless, and few want it. Cardinals, bishops, what are you waiting for? End quote. She's right. You and I know, both know that the Pope's planner commentators will be out in force to either defend this statement, saying it's in perfect continuity with the Church and recent pontiffs. You know and I know that's one option, or they'll ignore it. Those are kind of their only choices. But they won't admit that Overbeck at the very least is a heretic because, and here I'll disagree with Father Z on this, Bishop Overbeck absolutely knows what apostolic tradition is and what role it plays in the Church. He's blaming the problems in the Church on the apostolic tradition. There's no possible way that he could not know what it is. It's worth noting here that Bishop Overbeck is reading, reaping the rewards of his heresies. He admitted that his diocese is basically defunct in terms of vocations. Bishop Overbeck is the Bishop of Assen, Germany, and he said that in 14 years as a bishop, he has buried 300 retired priests, meaning they've passed away. And he has only ordained 15 priests. That's in 14 years as a bishop. He also admitted that he currently has zero seminarians, so no bishops or no new priests coming in the near future. It's also worth noting that he said all of that in a relatively calm way and didn't take any responsibility for the state of his diocese. In fact, he used the state of his diocese as the excuse for why we have to put aside apostolic tradition. That first article I referenced cited Benedict XVI, and I'll bring him more into this now. The late pontiff had this to say on the matter of apostolic tradition at an audience in 2006. The text I'm quoting comes from EWTN's website. Quote, In these catecheses, we wish to understand a little more what the church is. The last time we meditated on the theme of apostolic tradition, we saw that it is not a collection of things or words like a box of dead things. Tradition is the river of new life that flows from the origins, from Christ down to us, and makes us participants in God's history with humanity. This topic of tradition is so important that I would like to reflect upon it again today. Indeed, it is of great importance for the life of the Church. The Second Vatican Council pointed out in this regard that tradition is primarily apostolic in its origins. God graciously arranged that the things he had once revealed 
the salvation of all peoples should remain in their entirety throughout the ages and be transmitted to all generations. Therefore, Christ the Lord, in whom the entire revelation of the Most High God is summed up, commanded the apostles to preach the gospel and to communicate the gifts of God to all men. This gospel was to be the source of all saving truth and moral discipline. See the dogmatic constitution of on divine revelation de verbum. The council noted further that this was faithfully done, quote, by the apostles who had handed on by spoken word of their preaching, by the example they gave, by the institutions they established, what they themselves had received, whether from the lips of Christ, from his way of life and his works, or whether they had learned it at the prompting of the Holy Spirit. The council adds that there were, quote, other men associated with the apostles, who under the inspiration of the same Holy Spirit committed the message of salvation to writing, end quote. The validity of the church rests on a few things, one of which is the keeping of the apostolic tradition. We see this in the writings of doctors of the church and of the church fathers, who universally tell the faithful to cling to tradition rigidly, to maintain the faith that was passed down to us, and to reject novelty and resist any who would push novelty. The bishops at the Synod of Sin have been telling us that they are trying to build something new, which they're calling the Synodal Church. Maybe, just maybe, we should believe them. And if we believe them, we should demand that they either repent of their sins or leave the buildings and offices of the Catholic Church to actual Catholics while they go found their Synodal Church on the shaky ground of feelings and dialogue and moral relativism. We can ask this based on the authority of the only other council other than Vatican II that these guys like to cite. This comes from the dogmatic constitution of the Church, according to the First Vatican Council. Quote, Further, by divine and Catholic faith, all those things must be believed, which are contained in the written word of God and in tradition, and those which are proposed by the Church, either in a solemn pronouncement or in her ordinary and universal teaching power magisterium, to be believed as divinely revealed. End quote. Is there any bishop who has the courage to demand that these men recognize the validity of this statement and either repent or resign? I kind of doubt it. The closest we've had is a statement from Cardinal Burke given to Catholic Answers recently. Quote, if your bishop or the supreme pastor of the church is affirming things not in accord with sacred tradition slash the deposit of the faith, that can't command your obedience. You can't command obedience to do something against faith and morals. End quote. We have permission to resist these men, but no one with any real authority is willing to demand that they either repent or resign their offices so they can go found their own new synodal church elsewhere. What do you think? Are you surprised that they're being so blatant as to just call for abandoning apostolic tradition? Is this the ape of the church that I've been warning about? Let me know in the comments, please. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't, it does help. So to share this on social media, that helps too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.